think we can move on now then to um, Otto um, Bodi from the Ausda, which is the Austrian Data Archive. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, thank you very much. I'm very happy about the opportunity to present our efforts in archiving and publishing data on current COVID studies in Austria. Um, my name is Otto. I'm a research associate at the University of Graz which is one of four locations uh, of the Austrian Social Science Data Archive, and I'm responsible for the fast track publishing projects of the COVID data in Austria. Um, next slide, please. Um, first of all, um, let me tell you something, uh, some facts about AUSTA. Um, the Austrian Social Science Data Archive is a core facility for social science research data. And the special thing about AUSTA is that we have a decentralized structure with different locations. Our main office is at the University of Vienna, and we have um, additional offices, uh, one at the University of Graz, that's me, and we have also one in, in, in Linz and one in Innsbruck. We're the national service provider of uh, CESTA in Austria. We were established in 2017, and since 2020, um, we are certified with the Core Trust seal as a trustworthy digital um, repository. Um, our main responsibility is to archive social science data and to publish them for reuse. And um, this is what we do also in non-pandemic times. Um, next slide, please. So, but what happened in the last year, we all know um, the new situation was in spring 2020, uh, the pandemic reached Europe and thus Austria. And this had an enormous impact on the everyday life of the whole population. Um, the new keywords we had to deal with were terms like social distancing, lockdown, home office, distance learning. And this also had a clear impact on the social science research landscape. There were a huge number of new studies that were conducted. Um, there were requests for quickly available data. And there was the idea that open science um, could contribute to coping with the crisis. Um, next slide, please. Um, and in order to react to this new situation, the Austrian Ministry of Science granted us additional resources to archive and publish new uh, collected social science data. Um, we got um, two projects uh, funded by the Austrian Ministry of Science. Uh, we started with the project COVID-19 uh, Data Fast Track Publishing in June 2020. Um, now we are conducting the follow-up project. It's called um, COVID Social Science Data Hub Austria, or in short, COSTA, since April um, this year. And uh, this project is running until um, end, end of this year. And um, the goal of two projects was, um, was or is uh, to collect the latest COVID data in one place. This place is our COVID pandemic dataverse. And uh, second goal is uh, to ensure the fastest possible access for the scientific community. Um, next slide, please. Um, for the fast track publishing, we set several measures. Um, we received additional resources for the data interest process. Um, that means we got we have two more project workers who are responsible for data interest of COVID data. We set up an own interest pipeline for COVID data that bypasses the normal uh, data pipeline. We shortened off our review processes with a special focus on uh, anonymization checks. Um, we adapted our workflows um, so that the, all the long-term preservation steps are postponed um, um, after publication. And um, we um, created the opportunity for uh, pre-release publications with the possibility of later updates. Next slide, please. What were our experience and lessons learned um, from these projects? Um, we learned that flexibility is needed because the virus does not stick to the project times. Um, the first project needed to be extended because many studies were not finished or they were extended in, in, in their project time. Previously, it was planned that the first project will end by the end of 2020. And everybody thought after this, the pandemic is over and nobody will talk about COVID anymore. But meanwhile, we know that things turned out differently. Um, pandemic is going on. Um, and um, yeah, we extended the 
project um, deadline cost neutrally um, we succeeded in this um, to get more time to publish the studies that were already acquired but the data was not a, uh, not yet available and fortunately we were granted a follow-up project uh, with a slightly new focus um, to to support the the main uh, infrastructure data collection uh, projects um, because um, yeah there were two we also learned uh, the, the av availability of the data depends on different things it depends on the on the development of the pandemic and it depends uh, also on the type of the study and we learned that we have to differentiate between different types of studies first um, studies that can be seen as data infrastructure programs um, these studies collect longitudinal representative data um, that was meant to be shared um, from the beginning and these studies have a very high reuse potential and it was important to support these studies second in austria um, we had the so-called prevalence studies together with the red cross the sora institute and also the statistics austria conducted pcr testing on a representative sample to estimate the spread on sars-cov-2 in the population these studies were widely uh, discussed in the media and it was very important to publish these data very quickly for reasons of transparency and for re reproducibility uh, of the results. And third, there was a number of standalone projects with specific research questions, and the availability of these data was very different. We had data producers um, who didn't hear so far about the possibility to archive and share the data, but they were very excited about the idea. Um, Many other data producers had to be convinced to share the data. Um, some of them agreed to share the data with an embargo period after the project was finished. Most of the projects uh, were uh, extended in the times. And there were other data producers that didn't agree to share the data, for example, due to lack of resources for data preparation. Next slide, please. Um, some examples, the most famous example that you already heard before is um, in our collection is the Austrian Corona Panel Project. Um, we're supporting this study. The data producers from the University of Vienna submit us, submit us a new release every time. They have conducted five new waves of the panel. The first release uh, um, comprised the, the waves one to, uh, one to 10. Um, currently, we have the third release published. These are the waves 1 to 20. Uh, the fourth release is now in the interest uh, process, and the fifth release is announced to, to come up. Next slide, please. Another example um, is the International World uh, the International Values in Crisis study. This is an international cooperation project with comparable data on values from 17 countries. Um, we supported um, this research. Uh, we supported the researchers from the University of Salzburg with the data harmonization. Um, in return, we could convince them um, to share the data immediately. Otherwise, um, they would have been under embargo at least for one year. Um, the first uh, wave of the Austrian edition um, is already available, and also the first wave of the international edition. Uh, we are now working on the on the second wave, and they will follow up a third wave. Um, next slide, please. The output of these projects um, so far: we have 18 studies published in our COVID pandemic dataverse. Five studies are now in, in the ingest phase, and further six studies uh, are in the acquisition phase. And uh, we are just searching for another studies that could, uh, could be archived. Um, next slide, please. So um, the data we published um, are available under, diff under different access categories. Um, and the data management expert guide um, by CESTA, which Ricarda introduced you before, is a very helpful tool in this topic, how to choose the right access category depending on the sen sensitiveness of the data. Uh, we distinguish between open access uh, files and scientific use files. Open access files are freely available and reusable um, 
for every purpose, not only for scientific purposes. Um, this is, but this is only applicable for completely anonymized data. Um, in most cases, this isn't very interesting for uh, interesting for for scientists. Um, from the Austrian Corona panel, you already heard there is an open access edition and also a scientific use edition. The open access edition um, comprises um, not very much uh, sociodemographics. Um, scientific use files are restricted to scientific purposes only and are only available for registered users. And we distinguish between account based access and controlled access. Um, that means account based access is for pseudonymized um, data and um, you can if you are registered uh, download this data by clicking and and um, uh, and and uh, comply to the to the terms of use um, controlled access is for data which is uh, very sensitive for example the prevalence studies which contain um, information on on health um, is under controlled access and you have to fill in a a form and uh, also the employee a human being has to give you access to the data um, next slide please the data sets uh, we published are available um, um, they all can be found in our covid pandemic dataverse this is the collection of the covid data sets um, the covid dataverse is a part of our digital repository which is called auster dataverse and the data sets uh, in our repository are also searchable uh, with the CESTA data catalog and thus are a part of the European Open Science Cloud. So I think this was my last slide. Uh, I hope you, I could give you a good insight uh, into our work. If you're a researcher, feel welcome to access the data and make good research. And I really want to thank all the researchers who have shared the data, especially Julia and yeah, thank you very much. I think everyone echoes those words, Otto, yeah, in thanking everyone for enabling such great insights into the pandemic, yeah, more than ever before, and enabling those that fast track publication route as well.